Hello again, and we are back for our third China interview. I hope you've enjoyed the previous two, and this next one promises to be just as interesting.、Uh, so we today, joining us、uh, again, and thank you, thanking him for his time, is、um, Professor Bi Xin. The last name first, as in、uh, the China name convention mentioned.、Um, and Dr. Bi, Dr. Bi is、uh, works at Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University. Which is a privately run university in China, and I'm actually going to ask him to start off by talking a little bit about that because privately run universities in China are one, rare,、uh, two, quite innovative and creative,、um, and three, something that a lot of people outside of China are not aware of. And Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University is a joint venture between Xi'an Jiao Tong University, which is one of the C9 top level, the Ivy League universities of China, and then Liverpool University. Uh, and then, we'll, then what we'll do is we're going to go on and talk about open access in China. And、uh, you would have read in the bio, but um, uh, but um, Bixin has been very active in open access and is the DOAJ ambassador for China. So he's eminently qualified to speak on the topic. And we'll chat for again about ten minutes, and we invite your questions, which our producer Phil will pass on to us. So.、Um, Dr. B, thank you so much.、Uh, I will address you as Sheen,、um, as we've done. But thank you so much for joining us.、Uh, thank you, Nico, and、uh, thank you for having me in this conference. And also, I really appreciate that you mentioned our university because actually we are quite new, and uh, uh, many people really do not know. But、um, we have only a history of fifteen、uh, years、uh, for the university.、Uh, we established the university on the background that actually China is going to. Open its higher education market、uh, to other uh, uh, other developed countries. So that's a background. So we started from twenty、uh, six、uh, with one hundred sixty students. Now we have eighteen、uh, thousand students registered here, and、uh, our staff and students came from around one hundred different countries and regions. So、um, uh, with around 100、um, programs in undergraduate,、uh, masters, and PhDs. So uh, even uh, from three years ago, we we developed expanded into two campuses in the、um, in the two different cities, and also we are going to have an education base in the Great Bay in Guangdong Province, which is a quite、uh, dynamic in economic. So that's、um, just.、Uh, um, We have very wide、uh, network uh, with uh, with globally our researchers, and also、uh, they are very active in in doing research as well. So、uh, the time is very limited. Thanks for giving me this opportunity to touch a little bit on my university. No, I, I absolutely. I think I think many people may not be aware there are privately run universities or joint venture universities, and I've actually had the pleasure of visiting、um, Sheen at at his、uh, at his campus and. Literally, I mean, it's. I think it, it. It seems like it's half half foreign students, half Chinese students. It's a very dynamic environment. So,、um, but on to、uh, on to. I, I mean, I could talk about that for a while. I like education topics, but but anyway, one of one of the one of the pressing because China is initiating these、um, really substantive, committed reforms to STM journal publishing, and a lot of those new journals will probably be open access, but. Attitudes towards open access in China are evolving, and they're also not necessarily that that clearly defined. So, if you could share with us a little bit your understanding of how both、uh, both Chinese institutions and researchers, authors, view open access. Okay, so I I think、uh, open access actually became very、uh, how to say that English、um, very well known to in in China since I think twenty、uh, fifteen. So five years ago, now it's a it's a very hot topic, and、uh, you can hear about open access in、uh, all kinds of different conferences, confer conferences, and people are talking about that. And also,、uh, as you may know, that、uh, Chinese researchers、um, are paying a lot、uh, for the for the APCs for for publishing because we are publishing a lot. Yes,、uh, the, we are ranked the second the second in the in the in the world for publishing. And also talking about our. Our publishers,、um, I think that、um, uh, it is not very well known that actually in China,、uh, any individual are not、um, allowed to create a journal. 
So all the journal will have to be created um, and affiliated with a um, state-owned organization. So that, that's, that's good actually, because uh, the quality uh, will be assured. And uh, uh, the, the, the bad thing is that actually, um, uh, that actually causes the fact our publishers in China are very, quite often it's very small. For example, uh, each university might have a press and with uh, one or two or even three journals and with two or um, even just several editors. So that it cannot really grow big and to grow strong. So, um, so that, that's a fact. And also um, I would say that uh, I did a research uh, maybe three years ago and I shared on the DOAJ website. So um, by I just collecting all the, uh, I just check the website of the journals from China. So we have, um, as reported, we have more than 5,000 STM journals in China. So among them, around uh, 400 are in, in English. So I checked their website one by one. <laughs> so uh, I did not really finish it, but uh, when I finished the counting, it, I got um, 1,200 1, journals. I checked their website. So all the content are freely accessible on their website. So, but uh, I, I talked this with DOAJ actually, but they really do not fit into DOJ uh, criteria to be open access. So we just call it free access. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so right, but if you check on DOAJ uh, website, we have only, uh, I checked yesterday, we have around, uh, if I remember correctly, the 176 journals uh, from China listed in DOAJ. Uh, the numbers um, in 2016, when I firstly take the, the role as DOAJ ambassador in China, it was 37. So the numbers has been growing greatly and also, uh, the only thing we need to move forward is to, to help those journals to, to move forward, to adapt uh, several practice so they could be regarded and recognized as truly open access journal. So that's uh, something I could share um, with very limited time here. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about what, what some of the, um, the key criteria are for the DOAJ criteria that Chinese publishers need to meet? Because I think people would be interested to know about that. Okay, so uh, actually I have, right, when I actually working for DOAJ as a volunteer, as this DOAJ ambassador, actually I was working with uh, many publisher journals in Asia, actually. So that's a common, um, common thing that uh, those journal editors, they, they think they have already been open access. Mm -hmm. But do it actually requires that if you are open access journals, you really should have an open OA uh, statement on the website. So that's one thing. And also, also um, uh, many of the journals actually they do not charge for the uh, processing fee. And they think uh, as I do not charge, I do not have to say that. But do it requires if you do not charge and also you say you do not charge. Uh, so it's not really a big thing, just uh, quite uh, some best practicing for the transparency of those things. If uh, our journals uh, could move to that direction, we will have more open access journals in China. So actually last, uh, uh, last November, DOAJ and uh, some, because I'm working also with some uh, university journals association, which is quite a big organization, we had a conference online and uh, uh, we got 400 uh, participants in that conference. So those journals, they really want to join and uh, to improve. Uh, but to us, we just try to find a way to, to make it uh, easily uh, to talk with many people at the same time. So see, 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 see because it's quite trivial sometimes. Uh, and also uh, recently China, our government is um, pushing forward for the, our journals to, to, to become stronger. That means uh, actually to adapt um, uh, even better practice in publishing. And also uh, in, in, chi in China, we have the wording that to, to, uh, to connect, uh, to, to, to use the uh, adapt to the international practice, something like that. So, and also the government gave them uh, some funding to support them to improve. So that's a right. bigger um, background on this. Um, two questions. One is, 
one of the things I think people may not realize is that a lot of journals in China don't charge either a subscription or an APC, an, author, an article processing charge, because they're, they're basically um, they're funded by the university or by one of the government ministries. Do you, yeah. think, is that, do you think that there may be a change as, as these journals develop and they become more international, do you think more journals will start to, uh, to have ar ar article ABC APCs? Um, I think we could have um, to have several categories of those journals. So uh, firstly, just as you mentioned, uh, some journals created by the university, by the laboratory, by the hospital, and by some research organization. So they have really good funding. So, and uh, the, the founder of the journal or the, or the editor just to really to increase a scholarly communication with their uh, field and also uh, to, to lead in, in the research in, in, to some extent. And also um, some small journals, uh, for example, some uni university journals, quite often they will work with some the big names in the publishing, for example, those, those, those big ones, right? You yeah. know? And uh, they, 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 they gave them, pay them some annual fee, and then use those commercial publishers platform to publish their journals. And also by doing this, they will improve their publishing practices and also enjoy a good market for their, for their journal. And also uh, those journals, as I know, they, 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 they do not charge in the first a few years, but when the journals has very better reputation here, citation, um, something like that, and uh, they, they consider to charge the APC. Right. Um, so uh, I, I could not really speak for all those journals, but that's uh, uh, generally, I think. Um, and also um, researchers are still, uh, especially those seniors researchers, they're really into publication on the journals who has established reputation. So that's a, another, I think, a problem, but young researchers really love open access. Right. Yes. And um, right. I, I know, I mean, I'm, from what I'm aware, there are some journals that don't charge until they get indexed in Science Citation Index or Scopus, and then they may charge. And uh, I think there's going to be, we're going to see emergence mm -hmm. of various Chinese journal indexing systems as well. Uh, already, we, we already have CNKI, of course. Um, so my other question on that is for you, just talking about the China Journal Excellence Action Plan, um, mm -hmm. do you expect that most of the journals that have been selected for that plan or will be selected for that plan are going to be open access? I mean, many of them are already, I think, but do you expect them? So with, with each journal that moves up the tiers towards the higher tiers, would you expect the majority of those to be open access or? Um, Nico Frank did say, uh, it's, it's very hard for me to answer that. And, uh, uh, but I could say that open access is a trend. Now, mm -hmm. uh, people are getting prepared for that uh, from the libraries, from researchers. And I think when the, when the times go by, the young researchers will be step up on the stage. So things might change. Uh, but currently, I think, uh, we, because in, you, you understand China, we, we are massive. And uh, in even in different provinces and uh, in different cities, we have different situation. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it's a trend. Um, but let's just we then say how it goes. Yeah. Um, and then a, a, one last question, I think. So you know, one of the things about the Chinese system, um, it, 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 it can be um, sometimes a source of frustration, but also a source of great benefit. The mm -hmm. world is moving towards open science. And again, you're right, China's a vast country with, and different systems in different provinces, right? And, and, all, and depends on different um, government agencies. But I think as the world is moving towards open science, we see the embrace of open science taking different pace in different places. And Europe seems to be further ahead of the US, for example, with open science mandates. Do you, do you, think, um, do you think China has the potential to make rapid progress towards open science, given that the government, the government has the position to mandate it and also support it? Okay, so um, I think I would answer that in, in different angles. Firstly, I think our government is encouraging uh, sharing. So that's something has been written in the central government 
um, strategy five years ago, that is uh, to be innovative, to be uh, collaborative. That means collab collaborate and make sure everything is in line with each other. And also green that, that, that for the climate, for the energy, those things. So, and also to be open and uh, sharing. So the some government really, they, they, they see the problem and also they, they would like to encourage uh, the sharing for the, for the whole society. And uh, speak of publishing, so um, you, may, you may have noticed that um, some of our national level organization, for example, the Chinese Academy of Science, which is affiliated to the government actually, and uh, it's, a it's, a, it's a national level organization. And also our National Nature and Science Funding Council, and also National Scientific and Technology Libraries. So these three organizations are pushing for open access from uh, at least five years mm. ago. And also they, 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 they make the announcement, uh, I, I remember in 2018 in Berlin that uh, they, they support the, the, the OA 2020 and the Plan S. Actually, uh, uh, my university, our library is one of the very first we joined OA 2020 from the library side. Um, so um, I think, uh, okay, one thing I forgot to say uh, related to, the, to the, your last question, actually. So I put in personal that I, I know that many publishers in China, uh, especially universities. So was at the Tsinghua University, which is our top university, and at Zhejiang University. Yep. So last year, they, they all told me that they have planned to expand their number of journals from nine for Tsinghua University from nine to fifteen, and those journals is going to be open size. Right. And also, uh, as far as know, uh, Tsinghua their journal do not charge APC at at this moment. Mm -hmm. But if they expanding to fifty journals, that means they they become stronger, right? If you have yes. more journals, um, so uh, I don't know if they would like to charge, but uh, that's something I can share at the moment. Yep, uh, it's definitely a trend. Oh, well, Shin, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing your insights with us. Uh, for everybody, um, I will be at the networking session at one o'clock. We got some questions that we ran out of time to get to, but I'll be there at the networking session and try to answer questions. And um, if I have any questions to refer back to, um, to Dr. B, then I will do so on your behalf. Thank you again very much for your time. Have a, have a pleasant evening. And now I will hand over to Phil, who will get us ready for the next session. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Nico. And thanks very much, Jin, for your time for, for an excellent and very interesting conversation. Uh, so uh, an appeal again to everybody to please take a moment to fill in your participant survey. Yesterday, we had it somewhat hidden four layers deep with a sign on the door saying beware of the leopard. But today, everything is very easy to find. It's right there in the session information. There should be a link in every single session. I say, as Nico said, at our next break at 1 p.m., he will be in the uh, he will be in the uh, in the room in the great hall for a while. Uh, if you want to continue the discussion and ask any questions, so next we have our third in the our third session in the workshops. Uh, just to remind you, you get to those by going back to the timeline, and if you open up the session information, there will be links to both the uh, the platform that we're doing workshops on and any other extra tools or technology that your workshop facilitators are using please open them up in different windows or different tabs uh, so that you can access all of those resources and continue the conversation um, so uh, the only thing that's left to say is uh, please go there and find your workshop rooms and uh, and we'll see you um, we'll see you in the workshops and good luck and have a great day